Okay. All right, back to the presentation. So we're going over how to crush virtual trade shows. Now we're going to talk about what you can do before the show, during the show, and after the show to make the most of it. We're going to touch on pre-show promotions, how to get people excited to visit your booth, for them to take note that they should come by your booth. We're gonna talk about the marketing materials that you need to prepare and have on hand to use while you're interacting with your show attendees and for them to use and take with them when they're done with your booth. We're gonna talk about preparing your team, what they need to know, what you guys need to chat about before jumping right in. Um, we're gonna talk about setting up your booth. So as mentioned, we're going to discuss a few things related directly to the PPI Expo, but again, you can take these tips on to any other virtual shows you may attend. Um, and then we're gonna talk about what to do after the show is all said and done. So the big question is, how do we make sure people will engage with my company or your company at the show? So if you just go attend the show, do nothing beforehand, you're going to be depending on people just happening to stop by, see your booth and come in. There's a lot of things you can do though right now beforehand to get people aware, get people excited and make sure that they wanna come find you at that show or at the show. So you'll wanna create some excitement about the show. You'll wanna stand out, find the thing that's gonna differentiate you. And uh, you know, if distributors are making their virtual walk list, make sure you're on that walk list. And you can do that with some of these tips we're going to cover. All right, so why should somebody visit your booth? How can you stand out? There's a lot of different techniques you could do to do this. Um, you know, we have a huge industry. I think at the PPI Expo, there's gonna be about 300 to 350 exhibitors, not as big as the in-person show that we're all used to, but still enough for you to kind of get lost in the crowd if you don't take the time to put the effort in to make yourself different from all the other suppliers that are exhibiting. So there's different techniques you can do. So we recommend meeting with your team and kind of discuss um, what is it that you guys can do or offer to attendees um, that's a little bit different from your competitors that are at the show. What is that thing that they should, or they, they will want to come to your booth in particular for? So what is your value add? And there's a few different approaches you can take. One obvious way is to do some kind of giveaway, um, a contest. You can really promote that beforehand, encourage people to come to your booth and chat with you um, to be entered into this giveaway. You could also tease the release of new upcoming products. You know, I know a lot of suppliers have new products they're gonna be releasing for 2021. And you can use this time now to really talk about um, these new products that are coming out, tease your um, audience about what it is that you're going to be launching for 2021 and let people know that you're going to be going into detail and presenting these at the show. So if they want the first look or be the first distributors to be able to really offer the products to come to your booth. So teasing the release of products is a great technique. Um, you could offer customized marketing materials, you know, at Zoom Catalog, we obviously love this one. There's um, some tools you can use with us or even without us to offer customized catalogs and flyers. And so you could actually create some really great pieces that if somebody stops by your booth, um, they can get from you at the show with their logo and information on. And we'll go a little bit more into detail with this one. Um, you can offer free samples. Um, that one's kind of an obvious one. Make sure they're valuable and relevant to your audience, but samples is another great option. Um, you could even just offer one-on-one -on -one consultation. So, you know, come to our booth and meet with our team to discuss your upcoming projects or your marketing initiatives. Uh, make it more personal to them. Um, say, you know, if you come by our booth, we want to go over your plan for 2021 and see how we can help you. So offering those one-on-one -on -one consultations is another great value add that you can use to stand out. So you can use one or any combinations of these ideas. And of course, you might have some other ideas as well. But the main thing is to build this into your messaging before the show and at the show and give people a reason to want to come to your booth. Don't expect them to just want to click on your logo and come in. Get them excited about coming in. So 
we want to talk about how can you promote that list, getting people into your booth beforehand and fill up your calendar. So we want to talk a little bit about Calendly. So Calendly is an awesome tool that allows you to send a calendar on to your um, distributors and let them sign up with, for a meeting with you. And we know quite a few suppliers and other exhibitors are using Calendly and other tools like it to set up appointments during the show. So an idea right now is to sign up for Calendly or a tool like it and set up a schedule just for the show. You could have meetings every 30 minutes, every 15 minutes with your team members. And so basically a distributor can use that calendar to book a time to come meet with you at the show. And then once they do that, they're gonna get an email reminder, you know, hey, you need to go to this and the supplier's booth at this time for your meeting. And this allows you guys to fill up your calendar beforehand, before the show even starts with meetings with your customers and prospects. So if you do take this approach, you're going to get a Calendly link that you can use across your marketing efforts and that you can really encourage people to book a time slot with you. So I'm actually going to jump over and just show this tool a little bit. Um, we're, we're doing this. So we have a calendar set up specifically for Expo and we have time slots available. Um, we're gonna have our sales rep send these out to all their customers and ask them to please meet with us one-on-one -on -one during the expo. Um, we'll be building it into our social media posts, into our email blast that we set up. And again, it just encourage people to pick a time to dedicate to coming to us. This ensures they're going to plan on visiting our booth during the show. And with Calendly, you get a unique link so you can use that in the marketing efforts that we're going to touch on. Um, and another neat little tool I want to point out is that on the PPA Expo website, there's a list of exhibitors and you can actually attach your calendar here. So I don't know how many distributors will really use this, but may as well take advantage of it. So if you sign up for Calendly and you set up a calendar, you can come and link in your calendar. So if somebody's looking at, hey, who's going to be at the show, they can come click on you and book a time with you through this tool provided by PPI as well. So if you do this, definitely make sure to link up your um, name in the exhibitor list, but you'll be able to use that link everywhere else, which we'll get into a little bit more. All right, so pre-show, you wanna promote that you are going to be um, at this trade show and that you're going to be doing this unique thing, you know, releasing products, doing that giveaway, giving away free samples, you know, whatever it is that you've decided. So how do you get the word out? So there are obviously a number of different channels that you can use, and we recommend using a combination of the ones I'm about to suggest. Every supplier is a little bit different. You may have a certain following in one place and not the other. You might have a great email list. Some of you may not. So again, not all of these tips will work for you, but they're all worthwhile um, looking into and considering as part of your marketing initiative for the PPI Expo. So the first is an obvious one, social media. On my screen, we have a kind of mock-up social media post. We actually have an entire slide dedicated to this in a bit, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but social media is a perfect place to promote your booth, promote your attendance during, before, during, and after the show. Next is email marketing. Now, I just a huge word of warning, you do not wanna be that supplier that email blasts all the distributors in your list and says, hey, visit us, visit us at the expo. I've heard from endless distributors how much they hate these emails. They get so many of them and they really don't do much. Um, they get tons of different people saying they're going to be at the show, but there's no added value. So we bring this back to the initial slide I showed you guys, where, is, where we asked you to define what it is that makes you different. And we encourage you to build this into that email if you are going to send an email blast out to people to encourage them to visit you. So rather than just asking them to come visit your booth, give them a reason to come visit your booth. Um, give them the Calendly link, encourage them to sign up for that one-on-one, -on -one. let them know you're going to be um, doing that giveaway or going to be releasing new products. And you could even, um, you know, create some custom marketing materials for the show and tease those. You know, if you come by our booth, you're going to get first access to our new products catalog or new products flyers. And um, we'll come back to that idea in a little bit. But you want to get them excited to 
come to your booth. So um, if you send out that email blast, just don't be the supplier that asks everybody to come visit without any reasoning behind it. Next, um, you want to recruit your team. I think this is one that often gets overlooked. You, you know, the marketing team does all this planning and gets ready and the show starts, but you haven't really informed your whole team that you guys are at the show. So your sales team right now, your reps, they need to know that you guys are going to be at the PPI Expo or upcoming shows, that you're doing this exclusive thing, releasing product, whatever that is, so that when your reps or sales team right now are talking to people, they can say, you know, if you plan on attending the Expo, we're going to be there. Grab our Calendly link and sign up to meet with us. We'd love to chat with you there. Um, so recruiting your team into your pre-promotion efforts is a really great option. You can utilize your website as well. So add a banner to your website, um, add a little bit of a call to action there, maybe have a click through to schedule a time on your booth, again, with your Calendly link, um, but you can promote through your website that you're going to be at the show. You can use your email signatures. So if there's um, a certain group of people in your company that are interacting with distributors that are likely to be at the show, perhaps a nice little banner inside your email footer or email signature might be a good option as well. Um, another option is to utilize your blog. So if you have a blog, perhaps do a post about um, the fact that you're gonna be at the show, that you're gonna be doing this unique thing. Um, you can throw in your Calendly link, link there and you can use that blog in different areas like posting it on social media um, and sharing it with customers. So there's a lot of different ways you can do some pre-show promotion. Um, definitely look into it and make sure you're putting the effort in there so that you just don't show up at the show and expect people to come by you are going to get those people that do see your booth and jump in there without any no idea that you're actually going to be there. But doing this pre-show promotion is really going to help drive that traffic. So I said I was going to touch a little bit more on the use of social media. So social media is tricky. Um, it can be highly effective, but it also can be a huge waste of time. So it's important to have a strategy in place and really plan out what you're going to do with social media before the show. So you wanna define what types of posts will encourage people to come to your booth. Again, the post saying, hey, we're gonna be at Expo. I mean, it's okay, maybe one or two of those work, but if you really wanna have it be effective, put your value add in there, give them a reason to come to your booth and offer a call to action, which in my opinion should be sign up for that slot to meet with your team. So with the social media um, to create that pre-show engagement, again, you could tease new products. Um, you could even turn this into an entire campaign. If you have you know, 10, 20 new products that you're gonna be adding to your line, that is 10 or 20 potential posts where you could kind of tease what types of products are coming, um, tease the features that they're going to have, the brands. So all of those could conclude in, you know, stop by our booth to learn more, be the first to know about them. So teasing products in social media posts to do pre-show promotion is a great idea. Um, you could also talk about the special capabilities you offer. If you have certain imprint methods or certain services that you offer are unique to you. Again, you could use those to encourage people to come learn more at your booth. You could introduce your team on social media. I think this is a really great personal one. So get some fun headshots of the people that are gonna be working your booth and do a little intro on a social post. You know, hey, meet Bryony. Bryony manages this and this at our company and she's gonna be working the booth and would love to chat with you. Again, you know, if you have a few different people who are gonna be on your booth, that's a couple of different social media posts that you could put out there. Um, you could promote your digital assets. Um, I've said a few times, we're gonna come back to this topic, but if you design some flyers or catalogs that you're are going to specifically use at the show, you could tease them again. So come to the show and check out our new products catalog or our new products flyers, be the first to access them. So you can design these pieces and really use them to draw people into your booth and let them know that they're going to be available there if they stop by. You can also incorporate video. So video is one of the most highly effective things you can post on social media. 
Um, unlike images and other types of posts, videos, people are actually drawn to a lot more. So you could do some sneak peeks of your products. You don't have to hire an agency to put professional videos together to have great video content. Again, you can recruit your team to do some testimonials. You can feature products a little bit in your videos. So videos are another great way to push out your pre-show promotions as well. Um, in the videos, you could incorporate all these ideas I've covered, like product features, testimonials, meet the team, and your custom capabilities. And lastly, don't forget to use the show hashtag. So the hashtag for um, the expo is going to be PPI Expo D2U. And you can actually use this hashtag in a few different ways. So obviously including that in your posts is one big one, but I'm actually gonna switch over and show you that um, most people will be on Instagram on their show, but you can actually follow the show hashtag. So not many people have used it. We have, <laughs> so we're one of four. Um, but go on and get your posts up and start using that hashtag. That means anybody who follows this hashtag for the show is going to see your posts in their feed, whether they've followed you or not. And it's also great for you to see who's interacting and who's posting and what other suppliers are doing. So this hashtag will become really valuable closer to the show and we'll get to this, but also during the show. You basically get a live feed from everybody who's there and what they're saying and what they're doing. So you can really use this to your advantage. Um, this is just Instagram. You can do, um, obviously you'll wanna check out the hashtag on Twitter, Facebook, um, LinkedIn. So there's a couple of different places, but on that note, I also know it can be quite overwhelming. So for us at Zoom Catalog, we focus on those four. Um, there's other social media networks, there's TikTok and um, just other ones that we don't really spend time on Pinterest. So we've found the four that are most effective for us and those four may not be yours. So maybe there's two networks you choose that you're going to focus on. I would say for our industry, um, Facebook and Instagram are huge. There's quite a few of us on Twitter as well, but I think if you're gonna start somewhere and you aren't really sure, I would look into Facebook and Instagram. All right, just going back here. So that hashtag is useful in both using them in your posts and to really see what's going on before the show and during the show as well. All right, so let's get into the booth itself. What do you need to do to set up an awesome booth? There's a couple of different pieces that you will need to plan ahead for, and these can really make or break your booth and whether people stick around. So in the next couple slides, we're gonna talk about what you need to get ready right now. Um, we'll do a quick walkthrough of the PPI Expo booth itself. Again, that's not gonna be the same for every virtual show you do. Um, and then the marketing materials, which is a huge proponent of this. So um, I'm excited to get to that slide and really talk a little bit more about that. All right, so this is a list of what you guys need to get ready for PPA Expo direct to you. So um, we have a little note here. You can take a screenshot, take a photo of the screen. Um, we can also follow up and send it to you after the webinar. But these pieces are really important for setting up a great booth. So number one, obviously you're gonna need your company logo. Don't go right click and save your logo from your website. Make sure you have a high res logo that's nice and clean, it's not pixelated. Um, that's gonna be a representation of your brand, ever more important since this is all virtual. Next, you need a booth image. So I'm gonna switch over in a moment and actually go to the virtual show and show you where this booth image shows up. But this one is also extremely important. So these booth images are what the, the distributors are going to see when they're browsing the show. So that image is, like the first impression that you're making on anybody. And when they're browsing that list, your image is gonna be you know, the thing that helps them decide if they wanna click and enter your booth or not. So again, don't throw this together at the last minute. Don't just upload a, you know, a pixelated logo. Think about it, think how you can differentiate it. And I'm even gonna give you guys kind of a secret tip on how you can see what others are doing and maybe get some ideas. Um, you're going to need a booth video. This one, I think, can be the most daunting to some, um, but it's so important. When somebody enters your booth, 
the biggest thing on their screen is going to be your booth video. So we'll have another slide on this, how to make an awesome booth video, um, different ways to get that made, because I know, again, video can be a little tricky and what to include in that video. Um, booth marketing materials. Oops, I just noticed I have a mistake here. This should say marketing materials. So that's your catalog, your flyers, sell sheets, case studies. Again, we have another slide on this one, but um, obviously being with Zoom catalog, that one is key. And we obviously have amazing tools that you can use right on your booth. And um, we've been doing this, you know, even in the in-person expos, most of you guys, if you are Zoom catalog customers would have gotten a booth sign that we gave you at the expo last year and previous years that mentioned to your booth visitors that they could find your catalogs on Zoom catalog. The idea being that if they wanted your catalog but didn't want print, they would know where to find you. So with the booth marketing materials, you can have your Zoom catalog there but you can go beyond that. You can let them customize your catalog. You can have flyers. You can have a whole suite of catalogs as well. Um, and at the end of this webinar, I'm going to talk about a little bonus offer we have for our customers where we're going to be making these awesome landing pages where we will house all your marketing materials. So we'll make it really easy to link up everything that you want to offer onto your booth. Um, for these materials, you'll need a thumbnail of each. Um, I'll get into that when I walk you through the show, but these are important as well. So when somebody's looking at your booth, there's going to be thumbnail images for each market, booth material you add. And when they click that, they'll be taken to it. So for example, if you want to use your Zoom catalog for one of your booth materials, you would need to have a thumbnail of maybe your catalog cover or the Zoom catalog logo and cover so that when they click it, when they see it, they know they can click that and view your catalog. So those are important because they're obviously going to grab attention if they're done well. Um, you need a short about us welcome text for this. Um, I would pay attention to, or think about the fact that there might be people visiting your booth that know nothing about you. So talk about your products, your capabilities, um, put some effort into that one because it also again can kind of draw people in and get them to stay or have them bounce out. And then you'll need staff headshots so you can show who's manning your booth. Um, not too much on that one, except maybe, you know, don't use a bathroom selfie. <laughs> uh, consider getting some nice headshots done with your team or at least get, you know, make those at home. Okay, so I'm going to quickly switch over to the show and I wanna give you guys a little bit of a walkthrough of the PPI Expo. Some of you may have been in here already. Some of you might be here for the first time. Um, they've actually put some pretty good tutorial videos together that make it really um, clear on how to navigate. So in the exhibitor resources page, there's some videos here. I watched these a while back and I found them extremely helpful. So I encourage you guys to do so as well. But I will walk you through here myself. So this is the show. Um, when a distributor enters, they're going to see that there's a lobby, a show floor, and then some other options like the direct to, to live education and product pavilion, et cetera, et cetera. So in the lobby, um, PPI is planning to do some live events in here. I think they're selling some promoted spots. So if you wanted to invest a little extra, maybe you could pay to have um, be part of these live events. Um, we're not really utilizing those. We're kind of building our own. Um, we're going to try to build our own traction without upgrading too much. But one upgrade we did do um, was to be a featured booth. So in the lobby, there are featured booths here. You can see they have the featured tag. So basically, if you paid to be the featured booth, you're going to be on this page. There's kind of a lot of them, but it's not all 350 exhibitors. So we'll see if it really adds value, but you can see we have our booth here. Now, full disclaimer, we have not set up our booth yet. <laughs> so these images you're seeing are just placeholders for the most part that um, PPI has put in place. When we, once we do our booth, we'll have a different image here and have our content in that booth. Um, but you can see, for example, Common SKU has put their booth image up. And I mentioned before in my slideshow, um, your booth image is really important and you can see why here. Because as a distributor, I'm scrolling through and seeing all the different exhibitors, these images are going to draw me in or you know, I'm gonna totally glaze over them and scroll right past you. So 
we obviously will be uploading a better booth image than the default one that PPI has given us. Um, we have seen that some suppliers are actually using an actual photograph of their booth. So that is one route you can take an option or you can do kind of more of the common skew approach where you create some kind of graphic that goes in that spot. We will take the common skew approach. I mean, being software, we have a lot we can do with this image, but if you feel like your booth is you know, really attractive and going to get people excited, you may wanna go that route. So something to put thought into, um, and you can come in and log into the show right now if you've paid to be an exhibitor, and you can actually see what some of the suppliers are doing. So as you can see here, um, like BCG Creations has put a picture of their booth, AP Specialties has chosen to go with their logo. Um, I saw Gold Star up here has a nice um, sneak into a uh, peek into 2021 image, so they didn't go with their booth. So lots of great ideas here, but Again, don't throw this together at the last minute, really think about it. Um, probably featuring products, being a supplier is a good idea as well, um, but I wouldn't make it too busy where you can't really make out what's in there. Okay, anyway, so now we're um, at, in the show lobby. Um, there's some stats that you can use here. I'm not gonna get too much into the stuff. You'll be able to watch it in the video, but I do wanna go into the booth and talk about the booth itself. So, this is the booth. Um, again, we haven't set ours up, but you can see here that booth video is like the whole booth. <laughs> um, and so it's really important to put together a great video that will draw attention. Um, we'll come back to some tips and tricks on how to do that. Below that, you're going to have your about us. So a little write up about what you do. And below that, which they're not here right now, will be the thumbnails for those marketing materials. So the landing page we provide you or your catalogs, your flyers, um, and so forth. And so once somebody comes into your booth, they will be able to watch your video, read a bit about you and chat directly with you. Then from here, once they chat to you, um, they can actually go into a one-on-one -on -one conversation with one of your team members or a video call. So we'll come back to engaging with your visitors a little bit later. But those are the main things they're going to be able to do um, once they're in your booth. They're gonna watch the video, they're gonna be able to get your marketing materials, and they're gonna be able to interact with your team. So that's just a quick preview of the PPI Expo booth. Um, you'll be able to jump in here yourself and kind of get a better idea for it, get your booth set up. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys all an idea of what this looks like. So grab a screenshot of this um, so you know what you need to prepare. Um, these things, again, are going to make or break your booth in the end and really get your people's attention or get them to scroll away. Okay, so this is the slide I really want to talk a little bit more about um, those marketing materials. You know, there's a video on your booth, there's marketing materials, and there's a chat. So the marketing materials are something that can be used during the show by your visitors and they can be saved for use after the show. And if you put some time and thought and strategy into it, um, these can be extremely powerful. So what types of marketing materials do people want? So the main ones that we know of are obviously catalogs. Catalogs have been a big proponent of um, the shows in the past, you know, a little controversial. Some people hate them, some people love them. In the end, they are powerful, print or digital. They have their time in their place and your catalogs should be available on your booth. Um, flyers, obviously another great option. You can actually think about them ahead of time. And, you know, if you're gonna be launching a new product line or some new products, you could put to together some flyers of those specific items. So when you're presenting them, you can actually direct the person in your booth to go jump into that flyer and take a closer look. And if you do those flyers right, you could actually point out specific features and um, capabilities, et cetera. So again, um, the flyers can be used in a lot of different ways, whether it's just promoting a line, a specific product, new releases, capabilities. Um, another marketing material, huge one, is videos. Um, videos have been getting more and more popular in our industry, but it feels like this year more than ever, suppliers are really trying to figure out how to 
get videos made and provide videos to distributors. And it makes a lot of sense, you know, us being in this digital world we're in now, um, videos are a great way to be able to really give somebody an idea of products, seeing somebody actually use them, hold them, touch them, um, show the features. So videos can be a great option too. And again, they don't have to be these professional agency shot videos. You can have, you know, somebody on your team showing the capabilities of a product shot with a, a nice iPhone. Um, and that can be sufficient to really do a good job selling your products. Um, we don't get into this too much, but there's actually some resources on our the Zoom catalog blog where we talk about video. Um, but when you're doing your videos, you do wanna keep the end user in mind. That will ensure that distributors are excited to take them and send them to their end users. So sometimes we see the mistake that videos are made more for the distributor, but if you speak to the end user, that gives the distributor something they can easily repurpose and put on their website or post on social media and so forth. Sell sheets, case studies, other great marketing materials you could link up, um, and also photography. Again, another huge thing for 2021 is just um, providing a lot more assets to distributors to use and great lifestyle shots, great photography of your products is extremely important. So if you include these um, as materials on your booth, it can make it easy for a distributor to grab something they're really interested in or take it and post it, send it in an email, etc. So outside of providing these assets, another important thing to keep in mind is to explain to distributors how to use them. So if you have a bunch of flyers and your catalogs and your videos, um, maybe you wanna have some tips and tricks for using our marketing materials. So with that, you can explain to them that you put together these images so that they can take them and post them on their own social media or use them on your website, on their website. You can explain that you've kept your catalogs end user friendly because you wanted to make it easy for them to embed onto their website. So take our catalogs and put them on your website. Um, you can also give them some tips for customizing your flyers. If you have Zoom custom with us, they can easily drop their logo and post that on social media. So just um, consider giving your users tips and how to's on how to use those mater materials. Um, don't just assume they're gonna know, you know exactly what to do. They'll be helpful to view the products, but there's just so much more beyond that that you can encourage them to do with what you put together. Um, I do wanna touch on Zoom catalog a little bit. Obviously um, we provide tools for digital marketing materials. So this is an awesome place to utilize those tools. We are going to be doing complimentary virtual booth signs for our customers. So if you have catalogs and flyers on Zoom catalog, where we'll actually put together a landing page for you that looks like this with all of your different assets on it. Now, the cool thing about that is um, on the booth itself, at least at Expo, there are limited spots available to put your marketing materials and it depends on your booth size, but it can be like two spots or five spots. But if you have, you know, 10 flyers and five catalogs, it's going to be really difficult to get all of that content in there. So what we're doing is we are creating um, landing pages for each of our suppliers completely comp complimentary and we will have all your catalogs and flyers in there. We'll add your branding, your logo, and we'll have buttons to customize. So if you have Zoom Custom, there'll be a button for a distributor to click so they can drop their logo onto your catalogs and flyers. So you can take your whole um, landing page we provide you and use that as one link to your marketing materials. So now rather than having, you know, trying to fit in all these different links to these different things, you'll have one hub that you can plug in to one of the spots in your marketing materials. So um, we are working to put these together. If it's something you would like to have us um, create for you guys, just reach out. We will be sending an email out to our customers about it. Um, you don't have to utilize our offering either. I mean, you guys could consider linking in your own, adding a page to your website where you have flyers or catalogs. There's other ways to go about it. Um, but the Zoom catalogs and the customizable catalogs are the perfect marketing materials for a virtual trade show because they can now take your virtual marketing materials and distribute them out, outside of that. All right.
Now let's talk about the booth video. So as mentioned, this is a really important part of your booth, probably one of the more complicated to some. Um, it can feel a little daunting to put together a great video, but we have some tips and tricks to do this. Um, even we had to spend some time really thinking about what we were going to do for our video. Um, we didn't want to just pull on some old video that we created. We wanted to make sure it highlighted our up and coming products and what's new. We wanted to speak a little bit more directly knowing these people were in a trade show. Um, but videos are a big undertaking and they can be um, a little pricey depending on which way you go with them. So what we did, um, or at least what we're doing is we planned our video so that it can live beyond the show. So we actually came up with a really fun script um, that touches on the pain points that distributors face every day with digital marketing materials and how we solve them. And um, so somebody watching that, whether they knew who we were or not, really gets a great idea on what it is Zoom Catalog does. It encourages them to want to learn more. Um, so it works really well, or at least I hope it will work really well as our booth video. But beyond the show, we can use that on um, do our marketing pages, on um, social media. So it's a video that we hope will be something really useful far beyond the show. So for suppliers, um, we're a little different because we're selling software, but for suppliers with products, I think I saw this in PPI's tips. They said the biggest thing you must do is include your products. And I agree with that. I think it makes a lot of sense. You want to give an idea to people what it is that you sell. Um, so don't, you know, do the hello from our CEO opener and don't touch on any of your capabilities or your products. I mean, that kind of um, personal note might be really nice, but it shouldn't be your whole video. So you can touch on your products and your capabilities um, in that video. Um, you can make this video up to three minutes. Three minutes is surprisingly long. Um, I think we're cutting our booth video, it's going to be about a minute and a half, um, but you can go up to three minutes. Just be cognizant that um, people are going to be kind of excited about the show. They're going to be wanting to go to other booths. So unless it's highly engaging, a three minute video might not be um, worth the effort and you might want to go a little bit shorter. So um, there's a few different ways you can go about getting your video done. Um, the most expensive time consuming way would be to use an agency. Um, given our timeline, if you haven't done your booth video right now, that haven't done it yet, you probably don't have time. So our other two options are to do it in house or to find a freelancer. So in house is, you know, getting that iPhone and videoing um, your team using your products, talking about your products, doing um, a hello from the president, whatever you want to do there. Um, and those can work really well. Just make sure that you do cut it together and make it look a little bit professional. If you're unsure how to do that, you could probably find a freelancer. Um, but there's a lot of amazing tools out there that let you edit videos and you can likely put together something that looks good very quickly in-house. And then the middle option is to use a freelancer. And this is the route we sort of went. So we have, we have two freelancers that we always work with for a lot of our different video work. Um, we also do some video in-house, but we just don't have the resources right now. So um, Fiverr gets a lot of bad, has a bad rap, but honestly, there are some really, really talented people on the site. And if you are unsure about your, how you're going to get your video done, I would consider looking on here and seeing if you can find somebody that kind of can do what you're looking for. Um, given that we have a really short timeline, I would, if I was a supplier, I'd probably compile some really great lifestyle shots, um, catalog shots that I have, maybe some short videos of my team talking and using the products, clips from videos I already created, and kind of weave those together into a nice video with an intro and an exit. Um, so you could actually find somebody on Fiverr who will take all of those pieces that you provide and knit them into a nice video for your booth. So that could be a really strong approach for those of you that have not started doing your booth video yet. Um, we're doing an animated video. Again, we're in a different position because we offer software. So we're having an animated video created with some um, mock-ups of our tools and website. 
But um, I do recommend checking out Fiverr or freelancer.com. Um, you don't want to go hire that person that's offering the $5 video. You're not gonna end up happy. Um, so it is something you still need to invest in. Um, we are spending a couple thousand on ours knowing that it's gonna outlive the show. But it's an investment we really want to make because, again, it's going to be great for our booth. It's going to be great for any future shows and other marketing efforts. Um, but you can probably find a decent um, freelancer uh, to help you with your video, depending on how detailed you want it to be for a couple hundred um, up to a couple thousand, depending on where your budget sits. So. Check out Fiverr. I know it gets a bad rap, um, but it really is a great place for finding talent. You just have to be cognizant and careful when looking and looking at options and talking to the different people. So don't go with the cheapest. Go with the people that have samples of work that you think would really suit what you guys need. Um, really quick, some things you can put into your video. Um, obviously, an intro to your company, somebody talking about what you guys do. You can feature your best selling and um, that's another great point. So, you know, if you sell a lot of different products, um, you know, what do you put in it? Well, include your best sellers, your featured products. Um, you can feature your team members in there, your special capabilities, what makes you guys different, your wow factor, um, and then end with a CTA. That's something that's often overlooked. So what is your call to action? What do you want them to do once they have um, finished watching your video? So for us, this was a little tricky because we want, again, the video to work after the show. So ours is to connect with us to learn more about our services. Um, so end with that in your video. Make sure people know what action it is they need to take next. Okay. Um, so lastly, for pre-show, you want to prepare your team. We already touched on this quite a bit, um, but you don't want to just show up and wing it. Um, have a plan for your booth. So what will you, how will you greet visitors? What will you say? You know, will you have appointments set up? What if somebody shows up that doesn't have an appointment? Um, what items are you going to show and how are you going to show your items? Um, so there's different things you just should talk about internally before getting started. Now there's two different ways of engaging with your visitors in the PPI Expo. You can do video chat and you can do just a regular text chat. So video chat is really awesome given that we aren't in person and we can't, you know, hand somebody a product. So we know some suppliers are going to actually set up their booth in a physical location so that people can jump into the video and kind of get into the booth. Now, I don't think it's totally necessary to do that. It's kind of cool. I think it could work. Um, but another option is just for those people that are going to be video chatting to make sure they have within reach your best sellers and a lot of your products so they can hold them up to the camera and actually show them as they are talking about them. Um, one thing we had to plan for, and I think if you plan to do the trade show booth idea, is just keep in mind that the video chat is one on one. So if you have your first attendee show up and they enter a video chat, um, that's great. And if you have five people working, you can have five people video chatting. Um, but what if you have, you know, a lot more people than that and you wanted them to enter some kind of presentation or enter your booth. So what we're doing is we're going to actually have a Zoom, not a Zoom, the Zoom meeting link to a video meeting where anybody can jump in. So we'll allow multiple people in there. It'll be kind of outside of the actual show itself. But when they come to our booth, they can jump in there. And from there, we're going to be repeating our demo of our tools. Um, so when we demo our tools to distributors, and you guys could be the same, you know, when you go through your product line with distributors, you might need 15, 20 minutes to do so. Um, so being able to let people jump into that presentation um, will be a nice way to be like in a situation where you're not trying to give each person that exact 20 minutes of, you know, one on one. So kind of have this group meeting that anybody can jump into while still offering the one on one conversations. I hope that made sense. Um, it's kind of tricky, but um, just think about what is it that you're going to be presenting and how you're going to be doing these pre presentations and does the one on one format support that? And if not, how can you work around it? Um, <clears throat> 
think about what information you're going to collect. This is another big one. So when you meet with your team, make a plan for this. Number one, you can scan people on these virtual booths, but just like the in-person shows, oftentimes that information is not accurate. People don't include the right email address or an accurate email address there. So make sure when you meet with somebody that you ask them for their email address and how to contact them. Um, write that down, put it in a spreadsheet. That way, when you do your show follow-up, you actually get through to the people that came to your booth. I wouldn't rely on the scanner um, that is built into the show floor thing. Um, ask them about their customers and their upcoming projects. That's a huge one for suppliers. You know, making it really personal and asking what it is that's coming up for them in 2021. Maybe asking how business has changed this year and what they are expecting to see next year, what concerns they have, what challenges they have, how you can help them. Um, making these meetings a lot more personal and taking really detailed notes will enable you to do really killer follow up. We'll get back to that. Um, but while you have this one on one time with distributors, make it personal and find out what it is that they need from you. It's a little bit more work, but in the end, it's going to pay off a lot more. And probably most of you guys have already done this and are doing this at the actual trade shows, but you know, we want to do the same thing in these virtual shows as well. All right, some kind of obvious things, at least I think they're obvious, is if you are doing video calls, make sure your team is ready to show their home or wherever they are. So um, I highly recommend getting an external webcam and mic. It makes the resolution a lot better. Um, it makes the audio a lot clearer. So um, actually external webcam is a lot, but usually a lot better than the built-in webcam in a computer. And then make sure that they are planning their background. You know, they don't want their kids' background, uh, playground, playroom in the background, or you know, the kitchen in the background. So um, get the setup cleaned up. Make sure it looks good back there. Maybe even provide a nice pop-up background with your logo on it. Um, just plan this out a little bit beforehand. And then, of course, uh, make sure everybody's going to dress professionally, wear the uniform, whatever that is. Just look put together, you know, the same as you would pay attention to if you're going to um, a show in person. And then before the show, test audio, test internet, test videos, just make sure things are working. Nothing worse than getting into a show and having everything melt down because your internet's not stable or your audio is not working or your headset's not working. So um, do tests beforehand and you'll alleviate a lot of stress that can come up from that. Okay, so that's a lot of how to get ready for the show. Um, most of my presentation is pre-show, but now we have a little bit of, um, sorry, that was pre-show. Now we're gonna talk about during the show, which we actually sort of did already. Um, let me switch over here. So another really nice tip is um, we're in the show now, we're meeting with people, we don't have them in a booth. So we're not handing them products to touch and feel, to point at. Um, so what can you do to really talk um, about products and look at them together? So this is where your digital marketing materials really come into play. So you can actually utilize these in conversation. So you can actually point people to your catalog. You can point them to a product in your catalog. Like I mentioned before, if you have the products you're launching in a flyer, you can actually have them open up that flyer and say, you know, check this out all right, you see the first product. Well, this is our new release, blah, blah, blah. So they actually have something to reference rather than you know just listening. They're actually viewing something along with that conversation. So catalogs and flyers are huge. Um, we touched on it, but videos too. You know, If they ask for a specific item and you have a nice little video talking about the features, you can send that over to them as well. So um, using your marketing materials in conversation is going to be a really great way to enhance that conversation and make it a lot more effective. And of course, that brings me to your Zoom catalog. Um, being that this is virtual, I think this is gonna be one of your most powerful tools. So a Zoom catalog is jam-packed with awesome features that can help you and your visitor, the distributor, be on the same page, uh, no pun intended there. So I'm going to actually switch over real quick to a Zoom catalog here. So what you can do is have your team open up your catalogs on their browser. 
um, and have them ready to go. So if you're in a chat with somebody and they're like, hey, you know, I want to send jackets or my customers looking at new jackets, what do you have? Um, you can utilize the tools within a Zoom catalog for that conversation. So number one, um, you can actually quickly jump to a product in here. So if you knew the product idea, uh, ID or name, you could type that into the search and quickly find the product you want to reference them to and then send this link over in the chat. So you can see I'm on page eight. It actually tells me what page I'm on. So when I send this link to them, it's going to open just like this. So you can say, hey, click here. Um, you see the jacket on this page. The thermal ball is awesome. Um, you could also flip the page and see our other option, um, th thermal ball eco as well. You know, these are great options. So you can use this catalog with them, along with them, even though you're not sharing your screen because the expo doesn't have that capability. Um, and again, you'll be on the same page. You could also use the jump to page. So, hey, um, you know, if you jump to page 16, you'll see the product we just talked about. It's a great fit. So again, you're directing, directing them to easily get to the products. Um, and then they have the catalog for after the show. So they can bookmark this, save it. Um, you could even, you know, in the notes that you take from this meeting, save this link and then your follow-up email, send the link to them and say, hey, you know, we talked about this jacket on the call. Here it is for reference. You know, let us know if you need anything. So you can use this Zoom catalog simultaneously with them utilizing the different tools in here. And then another neat little tip is you could actually cut the product off the page. So if you didn't want to send the whole catalog over, you could just grab the specific product, clip it, and now we have just that item. So you could you know, insert that into an email or shoot that over to them as well. So it can make for a great follow-up. All right. So obviously Zoom catalogs, super powerful, especially in a virtual meeting where we no longer have that trade show booth. Um, I touched on this one as well, but take notes. Um, be really cognizant of the conversations you're having with individuals. Um, you know, don't just do the same scripted demo over and over again. Ask them what their situation looks like, you know, how their year went and what changed for them. Ask what you could do um, to help them. What do they need? These notes will make you make sure that you guys can do a really great follow up afterwards and um, ultimately really maximize the time that you're spending with these different individuals. So um, I won't get into all the different questions you can ask, but obviously you want to focus on their goals um, their customers upcoming events what's changed what they need um, and then you know give them resources after the show. Back to social media. So we talked about using it pre-show, definitely use it during the show. So I showed you how to follow the show hashtag, jump on that during the show. Um, there is going to be a subset of people that are tweeting and Instagramming and Facebooking during the show and you can kind of follow along. Um, you can add to the conversation, you know, add screenshots like, hey, we just had this awesome conversation and people want to know more about this product. So here it is. Um, you know, these are popular questions we're being asked. Here are answers. Just use the hashtag during that show and you'll be able to join that conversation. And then another big tip is to also interact back. So rather than always just posting, go and like other people's posts, especially distributors, um, comment on what they're saying, and just building more awareness of your brand in the social media world. Another cool tip is to actually ask your, your visitors for their handle, um, you know, their Instagram handle or Twitter handle so that you can jot that down. And after the show, you can actually go visit, uh, follow all of your different um, show attendees. Another great way to connect and show that you actually were paying attention. Um, also just having a feed of what your distributors are posting can be really great insight. So that can benefit you long after the show. All right, so after the show, how do we convert all of this effort into sales? So um, going back to sending out email blasts, I kind of talked about this in the beginning. Sending out a big blast to everybody that says, thanks for coming. Um, distributors absolutely hate it. I've seen it time and time again where people aren't totally sure on who came to their booth or they just grab their whole scan list and send the thanks for coming to our booth and, and that's it. 
Um, it's hugely ineffective and honestly can be really irritating for distributors. So if you are gonna send an email blast out to all the people that stop by, add value to that email. So rather than just saying thank you, um, maybe link in all of the marketing materials or add a link, click here to customize our catalog and include your Zoom custom link. Um, maybe include your catalog and some tips on how they can use it. You know, add it to your website, post it on social media, you know, include your videos and other helpful resources. And of course, include that call to action as well. You know, they visited your booth, you've sent them an email, what is next? So maybe click here to schedule a follow-up call or click here to get a sample from us. Um, just be really cognizant of this email and think it through. Don't just say thanks for coming. It's a dead end and kind of a waste of time and effort as well. But ultimately, personal emails are going to be the most effective thing you can do. So I talked about taking really detailed notes um, of your one-on-one -on -one conversation, conversations. It can be really tedious and time consuming, but it's going to work. So when you're talking to distributors and you're listening to about their upcoming projects, what they're interested in, you jot down what types of products they're asking about, it allows you to do really, really killer follow-ups after the show. Now I know um, there's some really big suppliers or even little suppliers, whatever size you are, you could end up with hundreds of leads from the show. It's kind of hard to say what it's gonna, what's gonna come of the expo, but um, if you don't want to do personal emails to every single person, at least make sure that you're following up with your hot leads and your big accounts. Um, personalizing this email is going to build that relationship and be highly effective and really help maximize the ROI that you invested to do this show. Um, so you can see we just have a fun little sample email here, but um, you can send some products that you discussed, mention the pro projects that they said they were working on, send them some suggestions, customize a catalog for them. I have another slide for this, but you can actually send them some marketing materials with their logo and information on. It's a really nice touch um, or direct them to where they can find your marketing materials as well. So personalized follow-ups while time consuming, um, they're going to work and it's going to be really effective. Um, so for those of you with Zoom Custom, you can actually customize your catalog for distributors. You can actually upload a list of all of the people that attended the show into our platform and generate a customized catalog for each and every one of them. So their logo and contact information will um, be added to your catalog. And once you do that, distributors are going to be much more inclined to actually take your catalog or your flyers and use them. Um, we recently did an industry marketing survey, and I think it was about 80% of distributors said that they want to customize catalogs before sharing them, or that they prefer to have them customized if they're going to share them. Um, it's just also a really nice touch. Um, you know, as a distributor, if I get this really great looking catalog and my logo's on it, and it looks like my company designed it, I'm going to want to put that on my website. And if you can get a distributor to put your catalog on their website, that's like the ultimate win because now your products are permanently on their site for the entire year. And so you're reaching their end users. So customizing proactively for those that visited your booth can be a really nice follow-up. Um, and I do wanna jump over here and show you. So with Zoom Custom, when you customize a catalog, you drop the distributor's logo on there. We take you to this page. Um, so this page is shareable and it's new. And what this allows you to do is share this whole thing with them and say, hey, here's your customized catalog. They'll jump on it and see this page. So not only can they now open and share this catalog that you created for them. So their logos on it, their contact information is here and they have their own unique link but they also have this whole page that has tips and tricks on how to further, further use this catalog. So again, just encouraging them to take those next steps, what to do with your custom catalog. So if you decide to customize catalogs or flyers for your distributors after the show, um, you have some really great tools and resources with the Zoom catalog tools to use in your follow-ups. All right, and last but not least, conduct a retrospective after the show. Um, look at what went well, what didn't go well, 
And what would you change for next time? These three questions can really help you improve and ensure that your next show is even better. So you can take a little screenshot of this slide as well. Um, doing the retrospective is you know, a key thing that I think most people overlook, but doing it right afterwards, talking to your team will let you kind of look at and analyze what went well and improve for your, your next virtual shows. So that's it. Um, just a little recap here. Um, it was a big presentation, I know, and we have recorded it, so we can send it on. Um, if you have questions, type them in the chat box, but um, I'll quickly read through these. So um, definitely invest time preparing for the show. It's going to make it way more worth it. Um, plan to create high quality marketing materials. Don't throw your booth together. Put, it, put the assets together thoughtfully and carefully. Find ways to stand out and differentiate yourself from all your competitors. Um, while working your booth, ask questions and talk to your visitors, get personal. Use your marketing materials in those conversations. Take detailed notes and send personal follow-ups and then conduct your ret retrospective after it was all said and done. So that's it for today. Um, I hope you guys found that helpful. Um, just a quick reminder that if you are a Zoom catalog customer, if you're interested in this landing page to link onto your virtual booth, um, these are gonna look amazing. We're gonna have your branding and your marketing materials in them. Reach out, we can get this set up for you. Um, there's no charge for them, they are free. So let us know if you're interested in them. And if you have questions, please go ahead and type them in your chat box. I will stop sharing my screen and come back onto the video. Hello. All right. Okay, so I do see there's a couple questions. They're more like one-on-one -on -one questions about Zoom catalog account. So if I don't answer your question, we'll reach out and get you some answers. Um, asking where the recording is. So we just recorded this. Um, we will uh, send a follow-up email to all of you guys so that you can rewatch it and share it if you found it helpful. So um, if you missed that email for some reason, just shoot us an email and we can get that to you. Um, you can always email us at hello at zoomcatalog.com and we'll be happy to help you as well. Um, people are asking like, where can we get the exhibitor resources link? Um, so let me see if I can find it here. If you go to the ppi. or expo.ppi.org, you'll be able to find all these assets. Um, they're right on their website there, but if you want to shoot us an email, we can point you to them as well. Okay, not too many questions. So hopefully that's a good sign. <laughs> um, another thing is I hope all of you guys come by our booth. We will be chatting to both suppliers and distributors. We're gonna give some sneak peeks into the new products we're building, which are really exciting and super cool, um, have to do with building custom marketing materials. So come say hi, check them out. And you could even schedule an appointment with, with us as well. So um, we hope to see you there and happy holidays, everybody. Thanks so much, bye.